Smyrna, the church under persecution, Revelation 2, 8 through 11. To the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful even to the point of death, and I will give you life as your victor's crown. Whoever has ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The one who is victorious will not be heard at all by the second death. The city of Smyrna was located north of Ephesus on the Aegean Sea. Commercially, Smyrna was a rival to Ephesus and in time far outstripped it. It had the only known three-level market plaza in the ancient world. It is called Izmir today and is still the third largest city in Turkey. The Church of Smyrna was a persecuted church. It represents the church period between 100 to 313 AD. During this time period, the Romans fiercely persecuted Christians. Many were imprisoned and their deaths were made the subject of entertainment. They were wrapped in the hides of wild beasts and torn to pieces by dogs and lions, or nailed to crosses, or set on fire to serve as lights for the Colosseum. Within about 70 years after this prophecy was made, Smyrna became the site of a notable series of martyrdoms. The twelfth martyr within a ten-day period was Polycarp, who by the time he was martyred had served as principal minister of the Smyrna church for at least 40 years. When he was old, Polycarp was arrested in a farmhouse one Friday night. Immediately he asked the farmer's wife to prepare supper for the soldiers who had come to arrest him. While the soldiers ate, Polycarp prayed aloud for two hours for every Christian he could remember in the Roman Empire. At the Smyrna Amphitheater next day, Governor Status Quadratus was deeply impressed with Polycarp and tried to save his life. When his efforts failed, he asked Polycarp to curse Christ. Polycarp refused to curse his master. He responded by saying, Eighty and six years have I served him and never has he done me wrong. How then can I curse my king who saved me? Polycarp was burned at the stake. Using the day for a year principle for prophetic interpretation, we find that there were 10 years of extreme persecution. This occurred between 303 and 313 AD. Christianity was growing so rapidly in the Roman Empire that many feared it would completely destroy the Roman way of life. Thus, in 303, Diocletian issued a decree designed to completely exterminate the church. This reign of terror continued for 10 years when, in 313, Constantine issued an edict that granted Christians full liberty to practice their religion. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. There will be no more death after the second death. Sin and sinners will be burned up, and there will be left neither root nor branch. For behold, the day is coming, burning like an oven, and all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly, will be stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, that will leave them neither root nor branch. Malachi 4.1 Jesus was the foremost who gave his life to save us. He has suffered just as those who have been persecuted through the ages have suffered. He will be with those of us who will yet suffer persecution before the end of all things. Make no mistake. Revelation 12:17 reads, Then the dragon was enraged at the woman and went off to wage war against the rest of her offspring. Those who keep God's command, Christians will suffer persecution until Jesus comes again. In future videos, I will discuss America in prophecy. She is the lamb-like beast who speaks like a dragon. Read Revelation 13:11. Who does the Bible say the dragon is? Revelation 12:7 through 9. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. Neither was their place found any more in heaven, and the great dragon was cast out.
that old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Ezekiel 29.3 Speak and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, Pharaoh, king of Egypt, the great dragon that lieth in the midst of his rivers, which hath said, My river is mine own, and I have made it for myself. Jeremiah 51.34 Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, has devoured me. He hath cursed me. He hath made me an empty vessel. He hath swallowed me up like a dragon. He hath filled his belly with my delicates. He hath cast me out. The Bible clearly teaches that the dragon is symbolic for Satan and his agents.